Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be scanning this entire roof with a moisture scanner tr from Tramex. And we're gonna use it in combination with a moisture meter just to check the moisture content of the substrate below. Let me just show you. So those two pins will go into the wood and will tell us how moisture there is. So in order to waterproof a roof like this, we have to be sure that we're not trapping any moisture sitting between the layers of felt and within the roof. Because if that water wants to evaporate at some stage, it's gonna bubble the system and blister it as a result. So therefore we have to scan it with a moisture meter. So in order to do that, we would turn it on and basically go around the entire roof and take notes. In places where there is over 20% of moisture, we, we're gonna have to fit non-return vents in order for the water to evaporate freely. Now, there you go, there's 40% in this area and there was 20% there. So that would indicate that there's a problem underneath this felt here, even though it looks okay-ish. There's no visual defects. I mean, it looks solid, there's no splits but that moisture is not lying. It indicates that there's water sitting be beneath this felt. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna install vents in this very area. There you go. You would never think that there's water sitting beneath this felt, but there you go, 50%. Now that means that there's puddles of water between the layers over here. So imagine if we coated this entire roof with a polyurethane or a liquid silicone, it would be just a matter of time before it blisters. So now we have one of the cores here and look, we don't even need a moisture scanner to check the, to check how wet this is underneath because look at that. Now, mind you, this roof is not leaking. It doesn't have any visual defects. And down below, there is absolutely no problems with the roof, but look at it. It's absolutely saturated. And it's not like it was built with a marine plywood which would last a hundred times longer. When, when they're working these constructions, they're using different types of material than you would use on a standard, standard house extension. So when this gets moisture, it basically turns to sponge. So that's why we have to put tens of vents around this roof before we carry out any waterproofing work. Yep. So that's why we install those bad boys. So we're gonna core it even more till we get to the insulation. We'll fit this bad boy. We fix it in, mask it all the way around with a part of the system and then use a liquid membrane to go over it. And that way any water that's sitting within the roof can evaporate through this vent. If we didn't do that, there's no way that we could guarantee this roof for 20 years. Um, even at that, uh, this is a, the very last call to save the roof. I have seen awkward roofs. I have seen difficult jobs, but this one is probably the hardest by far. <laughs> That all needs to be waterproofed. You could not use any other system than a liquid system for this job. As far as I'm aware, people priced uh, these jobs as well for felt. But you lose it instantly when you start talking about felt on a job like this. I know there is felt originally here, but this felt was fitted before any of the machines were here. Step number one is the most important one, which is cleaning the entire roof using a degreaser and power washers. So we have the boys lowering down the outlet here. We have somebody removing this deck and stuff and we have to wash underneath and work around it. So this will have to be removed. And we're pulling some of the felt here. This is the walkway that was stuck on, but everything that's loose and could be holding water has to come off. Absolutely everything is coming off. And this is why we have to wash this kind of a roof twice. Because imagine the falls here are not that great. After washing it the first time, you will always have some pond and water and dirt. So after washing it, we will hoover the water out and then the boys will come back and wash it again and then we'll hoover it out. And then we're sure that this, ha this is clean. Uh, we're gonna show you the process. So basically the roof has to be so clean that we actually buy fresh white towels and we wipe the roof with a fresh white towel. And if I lift it up and I see that there's some dirt there, the lads are coming back and washing it again. 
I can't express enough how important it is to clean the roof properly when it comes to liquids because it's all about the addition. The better you clean it, the better you prime it, the better the system will stick. But before we carry out any waterproofing works, we have to drop the outlets. So the problem here is that every single outlet on this roof is about that much higher than it should be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this roof open. We're gonna drop the outlet by about an inch and a half using OSB board and we're gonna create it in a sort of an envelope shape. But in order to do that, we have to set up the gazebos. Then we have to get our fiberglass trims and glue them into the roof all the way around. So just in case if it starts raining halfway through the job, we're not gonna flood the roof. So we have the gazebo set up and we have the fiberglass trims glued to the felt roof. So now when we open the outlet, if it rains, we're protected from, with the gazebo and no water is gonna divert into the outlet, thanks to this. And there is the rain. Imagine we didn't have the gazebo or the protection all the way around. This job would turn to a disaster. Okay, we have this outlet almost ready. So I'm just gonna open this up and show you exactly what we've done here, okay? So this outlet, we take it out. We have the OSB board. So we have routed in the OSB a ring here. So basically that leaves us extra two mil for the waterproofing system. So this way we're making sure that there will be no pond and water in this area whatsoever. So we're just waiting for a rapid set adhesive to put underneath and we're gonna screw it. And we also cut about 14 mil into the board. So when we put a bit of weight here, this is gonna make the falls because you don't need, an, you don't actually need a great fall here. All you need is a couple of mil from there to there. So this is what we've done here. And this is how we get rid of pond and water on a flat roof. So what we have done, we cut out a square, we cut out all the insulation, we put a stud, made the falls, put OSB down, same over there, waterproofed, and now we're gonna overlay everything with the system. So there was about that much of water sitting all along here because the outlet was too high. And there was also a major problem down, the, down in that end. So now we have this, it, this is about an inch deep here and it's going to nothing here. So there's only a couple of mil here, about 10 mil, 25 mil inch. And here we drop in the other outlet. We're not doing what we did on the other side because we don't have the room. And also we're gonna have the walkway here, walkway here so we don't wanna go past it. We just wanna get rid of all the water that's gonna be sitting there so it's not creating a trip hazard. So that's what we did. Now we're gonna cut out a hole here and wait till I show you the outlet. And this is the outlet that we're gonna fit here. Guys, guess how much this was? All it is is an aluminum outlet with a grill. Nothing too fancy. Guess. It was 360 plus 23% VAT or 22%. So yeah, 360 plus the VAT. We have the area nicely primed. As soon as we finish this here and we'll get to the far end of this, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna start applying the Lava 20. But just before we do that, we're gonna come here with a PU mastic and fill any imperfections in the concrete. It's very important to squeeze out any excess of the primer from the roller so you're not lashing too much in one place the less the better so you know if you put too much primer it's just gonna peel off the idea of it is to put it thin skin this is all primed now so we'll start with dressing the concrete to the felt so what we've done previously is we primed it and then we've used the PO mastic. And now what we're doing is we're applying a coat of lava in combination with the mesh. So once we have that there, then we're gonna go ahead and do in the middle with the fiberglass mesh. Oh. 
basically we have to go around the entire roof and do this this is what it looks like so we have primed everything then we've used a PU mastic to fill in the imperfections in the concrete then we've used the mesh tape on the corner and now we're using this matten in combination with lava to start from here onwards and this is what it looks like so when this is finished then we're gonna apply a coat of gray resin we're gonna be here for a while we have dropped some outlets here still bit of work to be done around this area and on the all the way there and all the way there We have a lot of the area waterproof now so what we have to do now is fit the anti-slip walkways and finish the rest with the gray resin but because we haven't been doing anything here for more than 48 hours we have to reprime it so that, that's what the boys are doing now we're using the super quick primer and on top of that we're going to use the gray resin and we're going to fit the walkways we're starting doing the walkways so we have them nicely masked using masking tape and now we're applying a thin layer of the clear resin make sure we don't leave any spots because you'll be able to see it straight away and then we're gonna apply the quartz on top of that and tomorrow when we come we're gonna blow off the excess of stones and apply another coat of the resin and that's the walkway done and then we're gonna follow the gray resin all the way to the edge Now let's have a look at the walkway. We started fitting the anti-slip walkway here. That's what it is. Another coat of resin to be followed here. There we have the finished, pro finished product. That's the resin top coat being applied. Going further. Yeah, we still have to go all the way around here. There we have David applying the resin top coat. Now let's swing around the back. We still have to do this area. We left it for the very end because there's air recycling units that are sucking the air into the hospital. We have seven or eight guys here today working. You don't see any of them because they're under the machines. I have to say we're doing extremely well on this roof. We have three quarters of it done already as it is. All we have to do is follow with top coat. I'm gonna jump onto this and I'm gonna walk on the other side and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the other side. I'm really enjoying working on this project because not only is it one of the biggest jobs we have ever done, not only is it one of the most awkward jobs we have ever done, because look at all the machinery, look at the level of detail in here. It's also a very demanding client. Working for a Beacon Hospital is like, it's just great to have the likes of this job behind your belt. It's a great project to have in your portfolio. That's why I'm so happy I'm doing this. We're probably gonna be finished by the end of this week. We're doing extremely well here, I have to say. All we have to do is finish the resin and we're gonna crack on with the walkways. It's a very straightforward job. Yeah, here we have some ventilations because when we scanned the roof in this area here, uh, the moisture was about 40%. But the board was, was, was wet. There you, go. there you have the boards. That was completely saturated when we did the car samples. So that's why you have the three vents here beside each other. As you can see, this roof was extremely difficult 
with all this machinery, air conditioning units, and primarily pond and water. We had to lower some of the outlets because they were fitted about an inch higher than where they should be. So we had to cut out sections of about two square meters, fit new OSB boards, and lower the outlets. Just in a couple of seconds, we're gonna be walking by one of them. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we mean. We scanned the area where we noticed that there was over 30% of moisture, let's say. We fitted those vents. This is a non-return vent. It's gonna let the water evaporate if there is any water sitting within the roof. And we know that there was some in this spot. Going further, we see our beautiful yellow anti-slip walkway all the way around the roof. Now, just take notice at all this machine and all the pipes. All around those pipes, all around there, this is all waterproof. This wouldn't have been possible using any other system, especially felt. It would be physically impossible to do this job in something like felt. Okay, so now we're walking up to one of the outlets. So here we had a major pond and water, so we had to remove this air conditioning duct. We had to cut out a section and then we created this little valley, let's say. As you can see, it goes from nothing to about an inch and then we have the valley. So there's absolutely no pond and water now and before there was about that much water. And when we scanned this area, it was really bad. It was the worst patch on the roof. That's why we have three vents in this area. Going further, we have another major machines just right here. So all of these pumps, they're pumping the fresh water onto the roof of the hospital where there's a big water tank. The problem here was that these are constantly sweating. As you can see, they are wet right now. And because we're using liquid polyurethanes, everything has to be bone dry and clean before we apply the material. And this was a bit challenging because we had the water dripping here constantly. But we got it done, no probs. Going further, let's have a look at the outside. I'm calling it outside because there is no firewall. All we have here is the harness hook point. And that's how we had to do this roof, using the harness hook points and we're in the harness. We are extremely high. Uh, I'm not sure how many meters, but I think it's about 20. All beautifully waterproof. Those two outlets are also dropped. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see the, the line right there. Yeah. We also repainted the tops of the outlets. Going further, we have... Okay, so we had a problem on this walkway. This is also another outlet that we have dropped. And even after dropping the outlet, there was still some pond and water on the walkway, which was a major issue because the pond and water on a walkway is nothing but a trip hazard. So what we've done here, we've used one of the expansion joint trims made of fiberglass and we twisted it up, all the way upside down, basically. And we routed the channel in the roof and we fit that. So this is taking off the water that's sitting on top of the walkway in this very spot. And there we have a way onto a ladder and there's another roof. We're actually going to be doing that roof very soon. And that's about it. This is where we started. I have to say that I'm super pleased with the results on this roof. It was extremely hard and challenging, I have to say. This is probably one of the worst roofs that we've ever did in terms of the detail. But I have to say that I'm really pleased and I wanna say thanks to the guys, to the lads and to Henry, my partner. We did an amazing, we did an amazing job on, on this roof. I know when you're in my